Well, today is February 21st, 2022, and we are so pleased to have one of our, our wonderful friends, Charles Nenner. He's, a, he's a, one of our best guests, and he has allowed himself to be, to be interviewed today. We're going to talk about a lot of his charts. We're going to talk about some charts we don't normally see. Charles, thank you so very, very much for sh- coming on to our interview. Thank everybody for watching us today. We enjoy, uh, we enjoy your comments. And Charles, thank you very much. You've sent us some really nice charts today, and I'd like to get those up onto the screen, and we can go from here. I don't know how long we have, but this is a really, really interesting chart. We had, don't see this very often. It's the first time you sent this, and this is the sunspots. Uh, Charles, did you want to start talking about this? This is a chart that that you kind of like. Yeah, I, I, I tell you how I came about. Uh, I uh, Once on my table years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, I had a long-term chart of the Dow Jones and had a friend who was an astronomer. And he came up with this. He says it looks just like the sunspot intensity. So, so what's a sunspot intensity? So I start studying. I wrote articles about it. So the sunspot intensity is... The intensity of the of the sunspots by the sun. Now, the years that there's a high intensity, the years that are low intensity. The interesting thing was that it is a very good correlation with what the Dow Jones does. Even if you want to look short term, you go to NASA, you go to the website, and they can tell you for the next week or two or three weeks what the intensity is going to be, and then you have a pretty good idea what the market's going to do. Now, we, we, before we talked about cycles, that if cycles are up, people are positive, and if cycles are down, they're negative, and the news can be the same, only the interpretation is going to be different. So this is an extra help that I use, looking what we can expect of the, of the sunspot intensity. Now, I come out today with a couple of charts longer term, because it's very hard to make people understand that we have a long-term situation in the equity markets, Like I had a hard time explaining to people, had a long term in the bond market. As you might remember, we talked about it a couple of years, that if you think inflation is going to be always 1%, uh, because for the last 40 years, bonds went up, then you better look at history and look now what happens now. Uh, People are losing on their bonds, uh, especially when they're in bond funds. They cannot get the capital back. And inflation, like I said, soon is going to be 12 13%. So people are losing money. Uh, so here we have the uh, the cycle in red, and below that is the intensity of the sunspots. Now, if you look at the last low, that was right there, let's say 2007, 2008. If you look the one before, that was around 2000. If you would look the one before, that was 87, 73. We're still, you know, we're still uh, not that old, but we remember 73 was a hopeless situation, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that was a big recession. It was was a terrible recession. So what it shows here is that there was a low in 2020, if you go to the end, and I didn't update it, but right now the cycle is stopping, which means since all of nasty things happen now in all kinds of markets, including uh, the drugs of war. I show this because I try to bring about the point all the time is that don't look at the news. The news is going to be interpreted by people who are interpreted by sunspots. So the sunspots, like you like you said, is they create an electric magnetic field down here on the Earth. And the crystallization of water has to do with the intensity of sunspots. And since our brain are like 80% water, so I, our interpretation and how we think is very much correlated to the intensity of sunspots, if you want it or not. So if you want to know if good things happen or not, they happen when sunspots intensity is high and you better watch it when they're low. So now we're at the top and it's only one of the reasons why the market is coming down and why we're in danger of having a war. So Charles, so we're, we, we're peaking on the red line and we're coming down. Do we know how- how long till we bottom? A couple of years. So we're looking 2024 would be the bottom of this? No, so 2020, 2025. 2025. It doesn't okay, mean yeah. it's exactly it's going to be exactly the bottom. But if you're a real investor, long-term investor, you have to invest. We discussed that once, you know, buy low and sell high, but nobody knows what's low and nobody knows what's high. So I, I have these, these independent indicators which gives you an idea what is high and what is low and when it's dangerous and when it's a good 
moment to invest? Well, Charles, this you can. This is a very, very obvious cycle, and oftentimes I remember you saying we don't necessarily care why. It's the the what and the when, and uh, that matters to us. And this is obviously you can really see that this is a a very valid cycle. So we just need to pay attention. So by the way, do you, by the way, do you see on the bottom that the cycle topped in 1928? Yes. And then the, the, the intensity came down again. So, you know, it's uh, it's, it's very helpful. Now, now, this is also uh, another chart that we don't see an awful lot. So thank you very much for sending these charts. This is unemployment correlated to the equity markets. And, and Charles, you go ahead and explain what your thoughts are on this. Well, the blue one is, is the number of unemployment. So you see uh, it on the top, it's what, seven, eight on a thousand and low, you go much lower. And what I wanted to show here, if you look at the bottom and you're a student of the history of the stock market, you see that every time that the unemployment is getting very, very low, the stock market turns around and sells off. Now, there, is a, there are all kinds of correlations because then people, uh, it's hard to find people uh, to fill in jobs, so they, uh, they want more money, and they get inflation and interest rates. But this is just one indicator. If you would only look at this, then you cannot be fooled by media telling you the economy looks good, unemployment is going lower and lower, presenting that as something positive for the stock market because it's exactly the other way around. Well, it's also conversely when it when it looks absolutely the worst, it seems like it's the best time to buy. Yeah, but that's a matter of feeling and not everybody has this feeling. So you have to come with very neutral indicators that everybody understands. Again, your cycle is very evident here. And you can see that the two peaks correlate to some pretty tough times. And right after that, the market started healing. So it's uh, it's it's pretty amazing. And so right yes. at the moment, we're at the, you know, we're kind of at an interesting employment time, aren't we? Because we don't know who's in the market, and who's who's employed and who's not employed today. Yeah, well, what you see is that, well, it was very low before the crisis of 70, 1973. We just talked about it because it made a very low just before 1970. And if you go back, then you see that in 2007, 8, there was low unemployment. In 2000, there was low unemployment. In 87, there was low unemployment when we had the crash. It doesn't work out the way that people think that study economics. Like, like, you know, I'm a medical doctor. I didn't study much economics. I'm, I'm up to date now. I, I taught it myself. I look at indicators just neutral. I don't listen to stories. I just want to figure out myself what the facts are. And that's why I brought for now these two interesting charts. Because, like I said, is we have a very long-term situation. Maybe you remember we talked about uh, Toll Brothers and NR. And we talked uh, in the last uh, update that uh, a good idea would be to... Uh, to buy put options if you own real estate. And I think that the Lennar and Toll Brothers allowed 20%. And I had some people who bought some puts and actually covered the whole price of their of their house already. Even if it goes to zero to break even. So you have to think in advance what to do. And there are a lot of ways that you can protect yourself. Now, the problem is that a lot of people look at how they make money and not how they don't lose money. So they're interested in, in making money. But we're in a situation that people lost a lot on the bond market. Even cryptocurrencies are tanking. And equities are going down. And you don't get much on your bonds or in the bank. And you have an inflation of 10% or more. You have to do something. Because if you don't do anything, you lose money. And people, most people don't realize that. So that's why I bring out these charts. So... We're, we're getting to the point where we're fully employed. So I guess what you're saying is that now is the time to start getting a little cautious on the equity market. Is, is that how I would read into this? Well, if you can show what we did last time, we showed all the cycles stopping in mm -hmm. January. And since then, I think the Nasdaq is almost down 20%. That's no joke. And other markets are tanking. And uh, it's, it's ready a little bit late. You really have to watch the cycles. And although you get a feeling that uh, the, the trees grow into the sky when the cycle stop, you better better do something and, and watch it. Well, I think our next slide is, a, is one of your forecast slides. Yes, th this is exactly what we're talking about because this is your research that you've sent to us. And this is Facebook that we, that we received in January 30th of 2022. 
and your research was showing that the Facebook was uh, fully valued and would be starting to uh, decline a little bit. Uh, Charles, did you want to did you want to comment on this? Yeah, if, if if you look at so on the top, the blue one is the price of of uh, Facebook, and the one on the bottom is the cycle. And as you see, this really works for hundred percent. So when I sent this out, uh, we went we went out of uh, Facebook around three hundred twenty, and it shows here. Uh, where the cursor is, the date is on the left side where the cursor is. So into March, the cycles were totally down. And if we go to the next slide, we can see what happened three weeks later. Yes, what the market see, showed. And look what happened. Th this was absolutely remarkable. I, you know, I, I guess I get jaded because you send this to me and these things just happen. So this is such a clear cut example of if you follow the research and just listen. And here it is. It, it looks like it's getting ready to bottom. Is that is that what I'm looking at here? Yes, but uh, it doesn't mean automatically you want to buy because uh, uh, the major thing is you don't go against the cycle. So what you do is that in March, then if you're still short, you cover your shorts and then I'll update the cycle and then I show if it's now a buy cycle or not. People who are watching the, the results and are watching the media got caught. A lot of hedge funds were still long in Facebook. I think everybody had Facebook. And the system that we use is, I don't know what's, what the reason is, but you have to get out of Facebook because look how the cycles are functioning for 100%. So also this time, you know, there's a big down in Facebook. You better get out. Right. And it was it's pretty clear and evident. So this is a predictive one on our lumber cycle, which is kind of important to us. And, and we talked about Lennar. We talked about, we talked about Toll Brothers. And of course, I'm in the real estate business. So this is your cycle that the uh, chart that you sent out no this this is a weekly cycle we also sent out daily cycles lumber is important because we have clients that are banks in canada and have a lot of loans outstanding with firms so so uh, they got in trouble already with natural gas going down for years and so lumber is important now the same thing you see the lumber price on top and you see the cycle on the bottom and this is longer term if you watch our daily cycles then it will tell you for the next 10 days 14 days if you're a trader, what's going to happen? But you see, actually, it's very simple. You buy when the cycle is going up and you sell when the cycle is going down because then the risk is very high. If you think you can figure out why it happens, if you want to spend your time on that, that's fine, but it's not going to help you very much. Uh, I don't exactly know what happened when, the, when we had to stop in lumber uh, and when we had to low in lumber because I don't really follow what, what is being written about these things, but it's not necessary and it outperforms every uh, every other analysis to try fundamentally to explain what the price of lumber is going to do. So looking at your at your chart, Charles, it looks like the price of lumber is going to decline for the next two or three or four months. Correct. Yeah. So maybe maybe people that are building houses and uh, maybe Lennar and, and Cole <laughs> Brothers, maybe either the, the demand is going to come off or maybe some more supply is coming to market. Maybe Canada is going to unrestrict their lumber because I. The Canadian uh, markets, of course, have been a little restrictive. You know, there's been a scarcity of lumber. We haven't been able to get things, and may maybe this is going to happen. So either uh, either it's going to slow down on the uh, uh, demand side or it's going to increase on the uh, on the supply side. But lumber prices are coming down. Is, is that the way I read this? Yeah, yes. It is, uh, but then again, I, I always tell people, if you go to my website, especially if they come to you, they get four weeks for free because... Uh, I just want them to read the updates four times a week so they know exactly what we write down, not that they listen now and half a year later says, but he said this, he said that, because things are, are adapted in the meantime. Well, I just wonder if this means anything for us for inflation. Do you think that this is telling us that inflation is going to start moderating a little bit? You see, I, I, I don't know. I think crude prices are going higher. I think natural gas is starting a new up move. I think soya beans, corn, whatever is going to be go much higher. I wrote a piece about Ukraine. Maybe most people don't know. A lot of countries, especially in the Middle East, uh, import 50% of the wheat from Ukraine. Uh, if you remember in, in, in Tunisia, they started the, uh, the, the Arab Spring because wheat prices became too high and it spread out. So if Ukraine cannot export that anymore, then wheat prices go through the roof. So... A lot of things look very, uh, very uh, uh, suspicious. And like I said, we will on crude already from $70 and uh, mm -hmm. natural gas we're long again. So a lot of things look very uh, inflationary. Yes, I, I saw your XOI. It looked like it was really uh, still heading up. 
looked like right. oil was, was still very, very positive. Right. So it, either it's restriction in supply, which is like you're talking about with Ukraine. And if you can't get wheat, those people who've got money are going to bid the wheat up to get what they can. So it's understandable. It's, a, it's really amazing how this all works together. I mean, it's just it all meshes together. Here's the Dow Jones. This is kind of a, a very, very interesting. This is still looking out. This is kind of a current chart, isn't it, Charles? Yeah, this is uh, from yesterday, I think. And what it shows you is this is a daily cycle. So this is shorter term. And it shows you that the daily cycle is still down into March. Now, again, wh why? I don't know. Does it mean there could be a war? Could be. I looked at the bond market. The gold market does it does look toppy. So that would then say there's not going to be a war. So uh, I don't know what the reason exactly is going to be. But again, it's not interesting. What's interesting is that we were totally out of the market before this crash started when the uh, Delta virus came up, you can see it here in 2020. How did the cycle know this? This, I, I, this is beyond me. Like I, I showed a chart. I don't know if I ever showed you a chart of 100 years between all the pandemics. Did I ever show you that? Yes, yes, we've, we've talked about that. But yeah, how does the pandemic know that 100 years are over and they have to bring out a new virus? So this is, this is really the secret of these cycles and I cannot, and I cannot really explain it to you. I'm happy it works. And a lot of people are, you know, are joining us and uh, it really helps them, uh, you know, doing very well in financial markets. Well, it, it makes your decision making a lot clearer for you. It, it is a mystery. I remember when we talked in January of 2020, you were very adamant that the economy was going to tank. I mean, you were showing your charts. I don't know why that was. You were telling me, I don't know why either, but certainly right. on my charts. And you were you were actually kind of you were a little you were a little concerned. Matter of fact, you're a lot concerned about what was happening in market because. You said oil is going down to $5 a barrel. How is that possible? <laughs> it was just an amazing call, Charles. The crazy thing was we went short the carnival lines before this all came out because the chart looked so horrible. And now we know why the cruise lines are doing badly. But who knew that? I don't know. How did cycles know that carnival lines are almost going out of business? Well, it just goes back to it, we don't care why. It's, uh, right. it's what's going to happen, not necessarily why is it going to happen. We just want to know what's going to happen. It was... It was absolutely remarkable. So, Charles, you know, I, I guess, you know, I am kind of a why guy. You, you know, I know that it, here in, in the United States, we get a lot of uh, foreign capital that comes in, and foreign capital seems to like the Dow Jones. You know, that, that's the, the top 30, uh, 30, and I think it's a little better known here than, than elsewhere. Is it possible there's some foreign capital that's going into the to the Dow Jones? I tell you, the uh, follow most of the European markets. We follow uh, Australia, we follow India, and they all have the same cycles. Could go up for a oh. week or two weeks, but the weekly cycles are, are down for a longer period. So you only get a bounce against the major trend that is down. So this is only looking out 10 days, two weeks then? Yeah, it says daily on the right bottom, you see? Correct. Yep, yep, I missed that. I missed that. Okay. That makes perfect sense to me then. I, I understand. That's that's a bounce we're looking at. Yeah. Got it. This is a longer chart. This is a weekly chart that says on the on the right side. And what you see is that this crash that you see, uh, what we just saw on the daily, the virus crash, let me call it like that, doesn't even show up. And uh, the last big low actually was in 2000, 2001, around there. And then with up and downs, you could have been long, but now this looks really toppy. And I think risk is very high for a while. Uh, this based on the fact that stocks are totally overvalued and whatever else is going on. I still find it amazing that people still took, look for buying opportunities. And uh, I, I don't know. It's very hard to convince people not to listen to the so-called so -called, uh, experts, but just look at the facts. So the fact is here that the cycle topped, which is one of the reasons why the market is already down a, a big amount. And even if you get a bounce, don't think it's not going to go continue after that because cycles are down for a while. I, I think people forget that there are other asset classes other than just stocks and bonds. You, you know, this asset class has had one heck of a run from um, below in 2020. I think it's almost doubled to the peak. And a lot of people uh, are late to the game, I think. They, they want to get into it. I hear that it's the... One of the worst things can happen is watching one of your friends get rich. So you want to you want to get in there too, and and people get pretty uh, pretty motivated to to make some money at the wrong time. 
So well, it's worse. It's worse if you could have made the money. I sometimes have people because I'm very careful with the assets, and it says, "Well, I lost money." I say, "You didn't lose money. You didn't play the last four percent up because it's too dangerous." But they call it "I lost money." Okay. So it's very interesting. So it's worse for them to miss four percent on the upside than forty percent on the downside. Well, well, Charles, if they follow your system, can't they just go from one asset class to another asset class? Because there's generally a bull market in something around the world, is there not? Yeah, but the question, I tell you what the answers are if we try to, even if we try very sophisticated investors. If you say, well, I think soya beans are going through the roof. Well, I don't know much about soya beans. Oh, you know much about the stock market or you know much about the currency market? You also don't know that. You understand? It's an, it's an illusion. It's the same chart, same cycles. It just says soya beans instead that it says, uh, you know, your currency. Right. So your advice from what I'm hearing is that the stock market is fully valued and that there are better opportunities elsewhere. Is that correct? You told me this about bonds like a year and a half ago, and you've been absolutely correct on that. I mean, if you've been in the bond market, you have really taken a beating. If you take a look that uh, we, what, what I told people is we make the money in the commodity stocks. So if you look at the, uh, we play USO, and we bought it around 50. It's now around 66 in a couple of weeks. We do the same thing with UNG that follows natural gas. It goes up and down 20% in a couple of weeks. You just follow the cycles. But forget about, you know, overvalued stocks, Microsoft and Google and Amazon and Facebook. Look what can happen. You know, I have a lot of baby boomer clients and I talk to them. I says, you know, once you come out of the, out of the labor market and you're done, you're no longer working. What you have has to last you the rest of your life. And if you lose 30 or 40 percent in the market, you don't feel very wealthy very long. So now, for instance, we, we, we are long gold, but it's stopping this week. And now we got the Ukraine situation. And now all those cycles look toppy. It's hard for people to go out. What if there's a war? I said, I don't know if it's going to war or not. The I don't only know it's toppy, so we're going to take a profit and we sell. And then you have people say, well, could it a little bit higher because now it's going up, so why would you sell? It could, but it's 90% probability that the cycles are correct, so don't take the chance. It's a lot of education. Thank God the people who are with me already 20, 25 years that started the Goldman Sachs and then I started my own firm. But it needs education every time again. Well, Charles, I've been I've been following you for 15 or 20 years. You haven't let me down. So let me let me just look at this chart. This chart seems like the the dotted line going down is May 20th, and it looks very clear to me that that gold has topped, and it looks like it it's getting ready to to drop. Is that correct? Is it- I didn't even say we had this this uh, this uh, chart up here. Yes. Yeah, so you see, so we played very nicely from the low. And now the cycle is stopping, and actually it, it the, the good low is in May. So I'm not taking chances. Uh, but again, people say, could it go up another 2 3%? It could, but you go against, you know, this is not how, how knowledgeable investors do their work. You do their work, like I said, you buy low, you sell high, but you have to know when it's low and when it's high. And that is what cycles uh, tell us. And... The other thing we never talk about is the price targets that I have a system that can tell you exactly how high a move goes and how low a move goes. So what what else makes it? What do you need? You know what the price target is and you know the date. Well, you've been very kind in sending me a lot of your research and you often tell me when to get in. You tell us where to get out and you tell us where to move our stops. Yeah. So it just it makes it a lot easier. You know, in, in talking to people, you're, you're absolutely right. Well, what an investor wants to do is take that middle piece out. You know where where it's just the the sweet spot. You don't want to you want to you don't have to take every last nickel and dime out of it. But if you got ninety or ninety five percent out of the move, that's plenty. You know, take your money and then wait for the next move because this is going to go down. It's just going up and down. It's just it's just like a pendulum. Am, am I right on this, Charles? Yeah, but the, the the problem is that if the gold market goes down because there's a cycle going down, the sentiment is the worst once we close to the low. And then you can tell people, look at the cycle is bottoming by, but now they're afraid. So they missed the first part already. And then when it goes up, it says, now you have to get out. Well, you know, uh, it's going so well, maybe this time the cycle doesn't work. So they, then it goes down and they miss another quarter. So they never never have the whole profit. But it needs education because if you look at this gold chart, I mean, it works for 100%. 
uh, people ask me, what do you do if it doesn't work anymore? I says, well, then I'm retire. But I said it already 40 years ago, and I'm still there. So, again, uh, people that come to you get it four weeks for free. And even if they don't want to want to get the research, at least see what's possible and how the insiders approach markets. Uh, it's educational, very, very, very helpful. Well, you know, so when I sit with so I sit with clients, and I sit with people that I know, my baby boomers, you know, we want to stay safe. And sometimes we're not asking them to take all their money out of the stock market. We're just saying you should really take a big portion of it. And maybe you should take your profits and put it into another asset class because that gold chart looks like in, in May, you're going to get a nice buying opportunity to make some money. So why take the risk? You know, I, I'm going to tell you, if you're 70 or 75 years old and, and you lose 30 or 40 percent of your of your nest egg, you're just going to be you're just going to feel awful. Let me give you an example of what can happen based on my experience. So the people that will say we're in there for the long term. So now gold is, this is GLD, but gold is above 1900. Okay, I'm there for the long run. There's a, there's a low in May, I stay in. And now it goes to 1850. Okay, 1800. Well, I don't sleep that well, 1700. And at 1600, I don't say it goes to 1600, I don't think so, but they sell out, they can't handle it anymore. And then it's May. And now they're afraid to go long again. So that's usually what happens with these long-term investments. You understand? Yeah, they're not so long term. <laughs> Once no, they lose, it's not long term anymore. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I understand. My my business, we look at five years. You know, if it, we tell everybody you got to be five years. We're really long term investors, so we're income investors. Bitcoin is actually the easiest of all because there are no fundamentals in Bitcoin. So it's all cycles. So look how easy this is. You see the first top. Uh, that was predicted by cycles. You see the big low was predicted by cycles. The second stop was predicted by cycles. And uh, the low is uh, in March. So you have just to- amazing. Um, it, amazing. It, I, mean, I mean, you can absolutely- Amazing, right? This. Yeah, just wonderful. Just, and isn't that simple? You don't need to know why. You just know, need to know what is going to happen. And this is as clear as a bell as you can. I, I get this from you. You know, I, I don't understand this Bitcoin stuff at all, Charles. So I, I'm not that guy. But Neither I'm going to tell you, I can see your work here. It's just perfect. It's just that, again, it's, it's working wonderfully. So this looks like, again, this would be time to take a little bit of a profit and wait till, did you say March? End of March? Yeah, well, a little bit profit is a bit late because we're already out from 70,000 or so. Uh, but there's still a lot of downside risk. Uh, what I usually don't do is in the middle, I give advice because I can tell you when the top is, when the low is, but in the middle could have a bounce. And then people says, oh, he told me to sell and now's a bounce. Mm -hmm. And then later come down again, they get emotional. So I tell them where the high is and where the low is and when we have a buy signal and what how high we're going next time. But you see, there's no, this is actually the whole situation. There's no free will. Because billions and billions of people and money are in Bitcoin. And my system can predict exactly what's going to happen. So the first step you have to make is, is the free choice that people can do this or not? And that's, that's already a very difficult question. You know, we're not philosophers over here, but that's actually what the whole system is about. Because if you, you know what they say, it's very difficult to predict the, to predict the future. But, but if you predict it, it means there's no free choice. Now, it's very difficult for people these days, in this century, to accept that there's no free choice. And, and there isn't any free choice. You've proved that. I mean, you, no. you see these cycles. Some of these cycles are just longer than others. We just don't realize right. that we're actually in, in, in a cycle. But, you you know, as, as you get older, you look back on your life and you, you can see all the different cycles in your life. It's just amazing. Yes. So the so, idea is become a multimillionaire and afterwards become a philosopher and decide if there's free choice or not. <laughs> That's a, that's a great idea. Yeah. I think you can help a lot of people do that. And and, and here's what here's what all, all my investors are looking for. They they're looking for entry levels because they're concerned about inflation. <laughs> they're looking to buy some property so that they can get some uh, get some income into their uh, into their portfolios. Maybe just discuss your bond work here, Charles. Yes, it says on the left side it says the 18th, 18th of February. So that's where the cursor is. So we could have a bounce over here. That's based on this chart. I could say there could be a war in Ukraine and people run into that. But longer term, cycles are down and you don't want to be, if, if you're trading, you can, can be, go with long. 
uh, especially if you look at the research, we're already long, uh, and it will tell you exactly what, what the next upside uh, is. But longer term, interest rates continue to go to go up. So you still have to stay out of the bond market. You have to stay out of the equity market. You have to stay out of the gold market right now. And like you said, the different assets. And uh, you just have to assume that you know as much about bonds as gold, as currencies, as soya beans, and just take whatever looks very good and make money. Because if you sit on your hands, you're going to lose about 10% a year in buying power. Well, you need to, you need to be invested somewhere. You just have to be smart. So, so looking at this chart, this is a bounce on your weekly. So it looks like maybe it's, it's good for, I, I don't know the time frame there, how, how long it's going to be that we're going to be up. We've got a yeah, window, I, maybe two months, three months. I know I, on, on the purpose, I didn't write it because I don't want people that don't follow the research to take the bounce. Well, I'm thinking about mortgages for my, uh, for my investors as the, if there's an opportunity here for them to refinance on some of the things, I'm thinking maybe this is a time for them to do that. Yeah. Then they, then they have to watch it, but uh, I can look into that and you can contact me. Let me take a look what the mortgage rates uh, look like. So this does look like the, looks like rates are going to drop a little bit here. A, um, a little bit. And then, but longer term, as we talked, I mean, we talked about this a year and a half ago, longer term, we, we bought them that, 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 that's a pretty long cycle. That interest rate cycle is 76, 78 years long. It's a, it's a long cycle. No, it's, it's like 30 years up and 30 years down. And we started to 30 years up. Yep. So, so again, so again, I'm sure that everybody has supply side problems, whatever. There's always a reason why a stock goes down, why interest rates go up. But the, 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 the system doesn't know that, like the system doesn't know why Bitcoin goes up and down. So I'm sure they come up with some reasons. But what you want to know is, are interest rates going much higher? Is inflation going much higher? And what are you going to do to safeguard your money? We've been talking to people to get out of bonds. You know, a lot of people are in bond funds. Which is even worse. Course, it's even worse. Yeah, they, 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 they never mature. It's not like you can get your money back right. and say, well, I'm never going to do that again. You just don't get your money back. Right. And it's just it's a terrible thing. And they are really uh, talk about some volatility. You get some of those long maturity bonds. You get some volatility in those funds. I put this one in. You said this. <laughs> I put this in. Yeah, that is just to give an example. What you said is about uh, if foreign investors go into uh, the Dow Jones. And I said, you see, this is New Zealand. All the cycles look the same on different markets. And, uh, and and this one is a, it, it has been down for three or four months. It looks like it's continuing down. Is that correct? Right, right. And uh, so not a place for us to, uh, not a place for us to be investing. Maybe at the low, we can go over to New Zealand. Maybe we can pick up some real estate. Maybe, yeah. Get some farms. They got beautiful. They got beautiful agriculture there. As long as you like sheep, it's going to be okay. Well, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So, so Charles, I want. Can we reiterate where we think that the average person should be in? They, not in, in. They should take probably take some profits out of their equity market. Is is that correct? They should probably start thinking of liquidating some of their positions in the equity market. Yeah, but then wait, then wait based on the daily cycle on Dow Jones until March when you're going to have a bounce. Okay, so so wait. That's only two or three weeks away. So better off do, doing something like that. Bonds again, they've got a small bounce, and if you need to do some refinancing, we can maybe if they can contact me, and I'll 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 pass along your uh, your recommendations on mortgages because I know a lot of a lot of people are looking to they've got properties they know know whether they should refinance or not, but it looks like they might be getting an opportunity here. And if for a long term investor, commodities seem like they're they're a, a pretty good bet at the moment, huh? Something in soybeans and oil or natural gas. Got people people are in real on. estate, people in real estate, if they didn't do last time what we discussed about, they didn't buy the puts. So if it goes up one more time, you see what can happen. Buy the puts on the real estate uh, builders, because then you hedge if, if your real estate goes down for a while. Right. And I, I think we've got another bounce. I think we didn't we didn't show uh, Toll Brothers um, slide, but I think they start to bottom here pretty yeah, soon. Yeah, they close, but it's only going to be a bounce. And you know, if you buy some put options and like what Toll Brothers did in Lenore, they go down 20, 25 percent. You make an enormous amount of money only on a couple of thousand dollars of investment. Yeah, so they so the physical houses, they can they can protect their their upside uh, gains by buying these puts. It's a Correct. great strategy, to, to Charles. It's just and that's kind of like an integrated asset approach for a lot of people should really talk to their financial uh, planners and kind of work that out just to, if they have any concerns on a downside. Uh, a, a lot of my guys, of course, we're, we're keeping them for income and, uh, 
you know, so it, it's we, just a different one. We our rent uh, comes in consistently month after month, so they're not concerned about the volatility of it going up and down. It's poor kind of an income vehicle form, but nonetheless, nobody wants that. Everybody wants to protect their capital gains. I mean, that that just makes absolute sense. So, so this is the last slide, and and this is part of your your website that people can come to. I, I certainly want to thank you so very very much for uh, spending a, a long time with this. This has become a pretty long interview, and people can can get your research. You've often offered it for three or four weeks, and they can yeah, that's for free for what they have. And then uh, I'm not sure. I'm not in charge of these things, but I think they get a discount if they write that they come to you. Well, even better. Yeah, they're welcome. They're always welcome to use uh, you, to use us, and we can come and we'll, we'll pass them along. But you offer you offer a um, uh, four week free look or a free uh, yeah free, free look and, and and if you get that, you get also the intraday. Now, what's the intraday? This is even more miraculous. So let's say the Dow Jones starts at uh, at nine o'clock or whatever, and we can tell you how many hours it goes up, how many points it goes up, and then at what time during the day it comes down and how many points it goes down. Now that has nothing to do with the news, it can be. So that teaches you that the cycles predict the up move and the down move. And if it works during the day, then it works you know, during the week, during the months, during the year, just like to educate the people how it really works. No, I, I think it's wonderful, particularly when you were in volatile times. I, 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 I cannot stress enough that uh, they should go back and look at our interview that we did in January, I think of 2020. You were just adamant that uh, something was coming. You didn't know why, but you certainly knew what was going to happen. You were talking about huge unemployment. You were just, you were yeah. saying that the, the GDP is just going to drop like a rock, and and you were you were very concerned about it. You were saying it's just it, I can see it on my charts. It's just going to happen. I see oil going to five dollars a barrel. <laughs> three dollars. Three dollars it was. Three dollars. <laughs> How is this possible? How is that possibly going to go down to three dollars a barrel? And and. <laughs> It was an amazing, amazing call, and and then recovered. So uh, your research is very, very valid. Uh, thank you very much for sending. I, I've been I've received it for a long time. I've been following you for a really, really long time. Thank you for uh, taking your time and and because we have a lot of people that are just struggling out there, uh, Charles. You know they they don't know what to do. Like you say, a lot of them are just strictly think the only investment vehicle they have is to be into the stock market. That's just not the case. So at the moment, stocks and uh, bonds are both um, probably very fully valued and maybe at risk. So people should really talk to their financial advisors and, and see what's appropriate for them. Maybe it's some time to take some money off the market and, and start shifting it in. Certainly think they should at least look at your research and see if it works for them. And right. they're always welcome to contact uh, me at michael at michaelville.com. We're more than happy to, to sit down and, and consult and work with, with financial advisors. And uh, if you've uh, told me about your, you send me your mortgage work, I, I'll pass that along if anybody wants that. That that would be just fine. Is there any uh, final words that you want, Charles? You want to leave with anything or any no. final thoughts? <clears throat> no, no. I'm still going to continue to live for a couple of years. I have no final words. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. Believe me, I'm very, very glad to hear that you're going to live a couple of years. Mm -hmm. 10, 20, 30 more years, Charles. We, I enjoy doing this. This is just great fun. Uh, all right. Well, thank you very much. I want to thank everybody for, for uh, watching us today. And if, if you need us, just go ahead and reach out to us. We'll put it in our, our in the YouTube video so that you can get the Charles's uh, uh, email uh, for Charles Nenner Research and then Michael at michaelville.com. So thank you very much, Charles. Thank you very much for, uh, for visiting with us today. And my very best to both of you. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.